Hey guys, in here. Um, I'm stuck at my in-laws, and I have like three hours with nothing to do. So I figured I would toss together another video because it's been so long since I've done any of the tutorials. Um, after the RTS challenge, I had tons of people sending me messages because I didn't really get far enough in for them to make their own RTS games. So I thought with uh, a small amount of time that I have, I should do just some real-time strategy concepts uh, things like uh, making units, moving units, selecting units, training, all that kind of stuff just so that you guys can come up with uh, games, those of you who have been trying to but didn't quite get some of the different ideas. Um, I would work on the 2D platform but uh, it's been so long since I've looked at the code I'm gonna have to take some time to remember what I was even doing and I don't really have time to do that while I'm here. Um, I do plan to get back to that though. So I'm assuming you've already gone through the Pac-Man and the side-scroller tutorials. Um, those are good because I'm going to skip a lot of the stuff that I've covered in those. What I want to do here if I have time is the making of units, selecting and moving the units. Same thing with buildings, making them and selecting them. Uh, training new units, which goes along, takes us back up to the top and then an advanced movement which is a formation movement so that when you position your guys and then move them as a group they all stop in the same formation as you started them with um, so that's what I want to try to cover um, alright let's get started um, in your form oh so that I don't screw this up because I forgot to mention this some in the past in Visual Basic under options and advanced I'm using SDI development environment. Um, it just makes things work a little differently and I don't have to worry about declaring variables, just stuff that slows me down. Your form, you want to change your scale mode to pixel. I'm going to make a picture. Uh, scale mode for the picture box is pixel. Appearance will be flat and the border style is none and I'm going to need a timer. Interval should be like 50, I don't know. We can play around with that later. Um, double click. We're going to declare some variables. We're probably going to be scrolling the screen around at some point. I'm going to try to use the same variables that I've used in the other tutorials. So look A and look B is going to be for scrolling. Let's do men will be the units. A and B is their X and Y coordinates. A2 and B2 will be the destination, wherever they're traveling to. Um, unit type, we'll say if it's zero then they don't exist anymore. And then what one will equal like soldier, wait I'll say worker, whatever. Um, we're going to need a speed, we've got to be able to travel. I'll say owner one will be player and two will equal like computer or something even though I don't think I'm gonna be doing any computer AI or anything right now um okay now there's two ways I could do selection I'm gonna go with the way that they handle it in total annihilation um, where you can have as many units selected as you want so what I'm gonna do is each unit is going to have a possible selected value so I'm gonna say men, M for men selected we'll say zero is no and one equals yes they are selected now, if you were to do something like starcraft style you're gonna have an array of selected so that you can hold 12 units ID numbers this would be the ID number um, I'm not gonna do it that way uh, you could easily do it that way if you wanted to buildings we'll say BA for um, their location B width and DB height, just so that the buildings can have different sizes. Um, huh, okay, I just found a flaw with using owner. <laughs> I'm just gonna say building owner, and those of you who are following around would realize how my uh, putting B at the beginning of everything might be somewhat inappropriate for a YouTube video. I don't know. <laughs> um, if the owner is, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, here we go. Health. Certainly want to have some kind of health for the units. B health for 
the buildings. And then, let's see, for... We need some way of selecting stuff. And the way I want to do this, let's do S1, oh wait, SA, SB, SA2, and SB2. Uh, that'll make more sense when we get to it. I think that's all we need for now. Under form load, always start off with randomized timer if you're ever going to have random variables and I would assume in any kind of a fighting game there's probably like a random damage value or a random chance to hit so always start yourself off with randomized timer let's do I'm just gonna start us off with a guy I'm gonna put him at coordinates 100 100 and I'm gonna say a2 is equal to A, so he, his destination, it's hard to talk and type at the same time, man. His destination is his current location, so he's not running anywhere. Um, health is 100. We would say owner is me, and his unit type is going to be a 1, just so that we know he exists, because if it if I left this blank, it's equal to 0, and the guy doesn't even exist. Um, I guess that's good for now. I'm, I'm not going to do buildings to start with. So, under timer... Oh, okay, here we go. I need a new function. I need clear man, and I'll pass it the ID number, and I need draw man. I'll pass it the ID number. This is just like erasing and drawing of Pac-Man or your guys from this 2D side-scroller game. So when I draw him, I'm not going to use paint picture to draw actual graphics. I'm just going to use like circles and line art. Um, from the other tutorials, you should have a problem substituting that in for uh, using paint picture to draw actual units, you know, graphics, artwork, that kind of stuff. Because um, I'm going to focus on concepts here. So let's see, we need to do picture one dot draw width equals two I want to have a certain thickness for the guy picture one dot four color equals VB blue so the guys will be blue one dot circle his current coordinates and we'll draw he, he'll be like six pixels wide or something easy enough I'm gonna highlight this whole thing and for clear I'm gonna do the same thing but instead of VB blue I'm gonna say VB white. So when it erases him, it's drawing the same size circle in the same place, just using the white background. Now under timer, the order that we always do things, you should remember this from Pac-Man, is first we will um, erase the guys, we move the guys, and then we draw the guys. That's the order we do things. So let's say 4z equals 1, 2 men, if unit type does not equal zero, because if they don't exist, we don't need to do anything, and we will say call clear man Z. So if the guys exist, we erase them. Highlight, actually highlight this whole thing under draw, and instead of clear man, it will be draw man. Easy enough. Paste again. This is where we will do the movement but right now I'm going to leave that blank. Uh, I have one minute left. Let me just run it so you can see there is in fact a guy at location 100-100. Oh, here we go. Normally, you're going to want to have another variable here, a two-dimensional array uh, tile is what we used in the other um, tutorials. This is like your uh, map data. I'm not going to do any of this right now, but you should know how this works from the other two tutorials. This would design like you want to have rivers or walls or rocks or anything so that your guys have to walk around certain things that you would collide with. Um, I think I'll take this opportunity to save the map or save the program so I don't somehow screw this all up and erase it. All right. 
And then, like I've said before, anytime you save your Visual Basic project for the first time, shut it down and reopen it so that it keeps track of your path. And that, I believe, end of my time. Let me save the video.